there is always something more that you can compare yourself to. It will never be enough until you become enough for yourself. Hi, sisters! In January, shortly after I moved to Dubai, I found myself slowly slipping into a depression. A state that I have actually never experienced before to this extent and it was very slow acting and then all at once consuming. If you've been depressed before you know that it's absolutely terrifying because you feel like every day you're battling your brain. Every day you wake up and you hope that you no longer feel this way yet you wake up and maybe you have some good moments but ultimately that darkness comes creeping back in. You lose all sense of self you no longer have interest in the things that used to interest you. You might oversleep or undersleep, overeat, undereat. In my case, I was sleeping too much and eating too little. And you isolate, you dig yourself into this hole where no one can pull you out of it. Even you feel like you can no longer pull yourself out of it and maybe you don't want to. And the worst thing is, you wonder if you'll ever come out of it. Guys, it's my father's day Kyoto and I'm so depressed. This feeling sucks because it's actually really terrifying, like having this feeling where you're scared of yourself. But I'm confident that I will get out of it. I always think I've had this mild form of sadness that has followed me throughout my life. I would have never called it depression especially after experiencing what I've experienced. It was just like this yeah, this mild sadness that would just like follow me and I could never pinpoint. I felt like there was a darkness and it was, it was like chasing me. Like, I, I don't even know when I became like this. You see, I hate myself for even feeling like this because I'm so privileged. And I would fill this void by dreaming of the future every day, thinking that the future has to be better than today. The grass is always green on the other side. I've always been ambitious. I knew what my life would be like. I knew what I wanted. And I achieved that. Yet now that I've achieved it, I feel exactly the same way. I posted this video in January about what happened in 2022. So after that year, because it was so bad, I decided in 2023 I was going to be super free, unhinged. I traveled the world, I made so many friends, and I really just let go of overthinking. And it was one of the greatest years I've had so far. But still, in those moments of quiet, the sadness returned. But I have this realization. Sometimes something is actually wrong and sometimes we are just desperate to have a struggle. So here are some things I've realized. Number one, sadness is a normal part of life. It doesn't mean there's something wrong. We have highs, we have lows, and we don't need to run from it. We can't have sunshine without a little bit of rain. When the rain comes, we don't think something's wrong. We're just like, oh, seasons or oh, oh, the weather that's just how it works same with sadness same with emotions the thing with me is i actually think i would chase the sadness like it, it had to be a part of who i am and that's what happens when you live with a certain state for so long it becomes a part of your identity it, in moments where i would, would feel too happy oh it's not real this isn't real where is this sadness i used to feel like we hang on to it Two, our generation is so far gone with healing and all this trauma, like, it's not entirely bullshit, but I think sometimes we don't need to go that far, like, something, sometimes there isn't actually something wrong, no one is perfect, but we don't need to fix every single little thing, and to be honest, I think I was functioning pretty fine, besides some obvious things that I had to deal with, but other than that, it was fine. Three. You can fill your life with other things, you can move country, you can chase your dreams, but at the end of the day, you're still there. Wherever you go, there you are. Number four, it's okay to ask for help. When I got depressed, I would actually completely isolate myself and I would wait for people to reach out and if they wouldn't reach out, When I would see my friends, then I would feel so much better and I'm like, oh, why didn't I do this before? Also, when I got from Japan and I fell into this state, I immediately got a therapist again, who I'm seeing to this day. In fact, I'm seeing her in five hours. Yeah, she's been really helping me. My first therapist, she was really bad. Then I immediately 
requested another one and she was great through and we've been working through everything together but honestly i think i'll stop it in a couple of sessions i feel like the thing with therapy is you actually don't need to do it forever but it's just like great to have their support as well for example this is something i haven't really announced to the public because i just feel like it's between me and my family and i don't i don't like to have so many people going oh i'm so sorry for your loss blah 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 but yeah my dad passed away last wednesday and this is why i'm in australia because i got a message from my sister saying it will happen soon and like while i've anticipated this for so long it was still really hard to go through and i was really lucky that i had my therapist there yeah so if you guys are struggling and you need a therapist on demand right now definitely check out better help better help is the world's largest online therapy provider there are over 30,000 licensed therapists in the network ready to help you with whatever you need all you need to do fill out a couple of questions and they will match you with the perfect therapist for you and if you don't like your therapist because it is like dating just like how i didn't like my first one you can request a new one and you can actually choose from a bunch of therapists after which one you like and it doesn't even cost money to change your therapist they also have group therapy sessions which i found incredibly helpful when I was in my depressive state because you know group therapy is not something I would actually do under normal circumstances like it's dude I was so desperate for help that I was doing it and it really helped me so you can do it all from your phone or your computer via phone call video chat or messaging however you feel the most comfortable it's the easiest and quickest possible way to speak to a therapist like I pretty much had one the next day and you'll usually be matched with one within 48 hours so let better help connect you with a therapist that can support you all from the comfort of your own home so go visit my link right here and use my code to get 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp. Problems are not always real. So like I said, we can be addicted to the struggle and when we're alone, the, the, our brain likes to overthink things, it likes to create things. And honestly, the more free time you have, the more time you have to make up these things, which just aren't real. Then, then it goes into a mindset thing. I'm a negativist with certain things. So if I don't like something, I just find all the evidence for why I don't like it even more. So I love Dubai when I went there after Japan because I was so depressed. I'm like, I hate Dubai. I hate it. And I would like list everything I hate every day. There's a new thing I hate. And because I'm a manifesto, you guys, I create my reality more things would emerge. I was like, I need to stop this. Let's turn it around. I love to Dubai. Let's change the mindset. If you're a man watching this, have compassion for your girlfriend or the women in your life because when our periods hit, we're a different person. Like that is when you're fighting your brain the most because your hormones are out of whack, your brain camera chemicals are out of whack. We're in a different cycle. So we need to have compassion for ourselves. And seven, the grass is not greener on the other side but we always think it is when we get that thing we're gonna be happy when we achieve this we're gonna be happy or like that person's life is so much better it's never the case you know why when it happens to you if you've prepared mentally for it for so long it really just feels exactly the same and ultimately like you are still the same person while you may be a little bit different it's like inherently we still have all the characteristics and problems that make us us especially if you've like deeply pushed it down for example like i found this video of me when i was 19 i think or 18 and you know like the things i think about today i actually didn't think i had these problems back in the day so when i found this video it actually really shocked me and it's like wow it's still there despite like all the work i've done on myself and it's like sometimes these things are so deeply rooted in us that we can't get rid of it and we don't have to get rid of it like this idea of perfection is so crazy because number one perfection is also subjective and we all have freaking issues honestly guys no shit our generation is so prone to depression something like 45 percent of gen z thinks that they're doing okay Oh, it was the other way around i forgot but gen z damn compared to our parents like we are going through it cost of living crisis it's like the fact that it's just came out that the middle class actually doesn't exist anymore because of inflation i think back in like 1984 thirty thousand dollars was the average salary and the average house price was something like 2.5x that 
And that in today's money is something like over 150,000, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, which the average person does not earn. And not to mention, housing prices are also through the roof. Our generation, we have that to deal with. Number two, we have, and I think arguably, this is the culprit, we have too much social media. We see too much into other people's lives. Our parents, our grandparents, the only people they were comparing themselves to was like Elvis Presley on a magazine, Marilyn Monroe, the pretty girl in their school. Who do we compare ourselves to? Everyone that we see on our phone. We have access to everyone in the world on our phone and I don't think that's normal. We always think the grass is better on the other side, there's something better, we can look better. And you know, when I was so depressed, yeah, TikTok would make it worse, but when you're in such a free state, you actually can't stop yourself from scrolling, it's doom scrolling. So I would get myself more and more into this state, scrolling, oh, I can be prettier, I can be better, look at this person doing that. And it's like, honey, who I am today is who I used to be when I was 17 and I didn't even know if I would achieve that. And now I've achieved it. Now what? You see, there's always something better. So I travel a lot, right? Very grateful. So a lot of people, they're like, how are you so rich? Like you travel so much. And like, I used to think people who travel a lot were rich as well, because it is such a privilege, right? But I'm going to give you a comparison thing right here. So a lot of people I know, they are very wealthy. So in our life, it's very normal to travel this much. But you know what it becomes a matter of actually? For normal people, they're like, wow, they traveled, they're rich. No when you get you get to another level did you go business or first class oh you went business <laughs> broke first class is where it's at now what airline did you fly oh you didn't go to emirates or qatar brokey and then another level did you take a pj private jet and then another level well what private jet did you take what model there is always something better there is always something more that you can compare yourself to. It will never be enough until you become enough for yourself. My depression is very complicated. It is, so I also got diagnosed with complex PTSD and I have a healing video for this, which will be coming out soon. I'm taking you guys on the journey. For me, there's a lot of responsibility. There was so much building up and my body was literally giving up on me over the years. And I think my move to Dubai was so stressful. That was when my body was like, we're done. Like, we actually can't handle this anymore. I think also our generation, yeah, we're, we're like so hyper-focused on money because we have to. And also like we have all of these people, yeah, living such a great lifestyle. So we think like we have to do that when, you know, when I talk to my mom and she sees me traveling, traveling a lot and I'm like, oh yeah, like my friends are also doing the same. But she's like really confused because people in her generation weren't doing that. Do you remember back in the day, when someone was a millionaire, it was like, whoa, like they're rich. Now, like someone's a millionaire. Oh, well, fucking everyone's a millionaire nowadays. Because of social media, our dopamine is also fucked up and dopamine plays a huge role in depression as well. So if we can't regulate our dopamine and produce it correctly, well, of course we're prone to depression. Additionally, this is a big one, but we no longer have a sense of community compared to back in the day. And a TikTok that actually woke me up to this was, she was saying, I think it's okay to ask friends for rides to the airport. And she was saying that because, you know, back in the day, friends would do things for each other. Like it takes a village to raise a child. And now a lot of friendships and relationships, they are super duper transactional. Like I know some people, if they pick me up somewhere and give me a lift, it's like, okay, well, you owe me something now there's always like a transactional element and it also depends on where you live in the world but i think in dubai it is very transactional almost to the point where if someone does something out of the goodness of their heart it's like why did you do that number one and number two what do i owe you now we're so isolated and we don't have the same sense of community great plug time but if you guys want to join triple s society which has an amazing community on there, like-minded individuals, grow friendships, take my courses, live streams from me, live coaching, it is all right here. People don't have time to, to have passion anymore. There is no passion because there is no time because people now have to spend so much time to make more money, to figure out how to survive. We live very empty lives now. And I often think about, yeah, I achieved my goal that I didn't know I was going to achieve when I was younger, but I, I did it. And 16 year old me, who people would make fun of her for doing YouTube, and I would tell them I'm going to be fucking YouTube famous, fuck you. I'm going to travel the world, <laughs> be rich, and I did that, you know? 
but like what next? There's always a what next. I guess like the point I want to make in this video is number one, everything you see online is not as it seems. So, you know, try to not compare yourself to something that I'm doing and I'm going to take you guys on this journey with me is but I'm simply like forging your own path without outside influence outside influence being simply you may think you want something and you think that's your value but it might not be actually and i realized i was not living according to my values when i moved to dubai dubai is not even a city that aligns with my values so really i shouldn't even be there but i might stick it out guys where will i move next my youtube subscribers pick where i move next my new video <laughs> also i'm doing a lot better now i've definitely come out of it a lot and I want to show you how I do that in my next video and peace out <laughs> you're a witch get the fuck up you right go do some spells or you some right. shit why are you, you right. crying Norman Rockwell no high under it's just me and you I'm gonna you on my list <laughs> Give me Hallmark, one dream under one lover, make me happy and blue. Norman Rockwell, no high under a <laughs> cup Mm, it's just yeah. me and you Oh god, I'm still on my list It's me, a little gun is bitch On the street with the neighborhood kids Selling off they make it You're in the yard I like the fire As the summer fades away What do you think we can say? You right, I do We make it work American made Oh yeah Oh yeah Selling off bang bang kids kids Oh yeah Oh yeah Oh yeah Signing off, bang bang kiss kiss. Oh, I'm you on my lips. It's me, a little gun of stitch. On the stoop with a neighborhood kiss. Signing off, bang bang kiss kiss. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah.